Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Descent, Journeys in the Dark, 2nd edition. Okie doke, now this is a hugely popular sword and sorcery, big adventure game with lots of plastic names. You can just imagine, this game comes with a ton of plastic, with tons of cards, with tons of dungeon pieces, just tons and tons and tons of everything, including a quest book that comes with 20 unique quests in this. So you get a lot of game out of this box. Let me just say that right up front. And now, the game is actually really interesting in that there's primarily two ways you can play. Now in this game, one player is gonna play the evil overlord who's trying to take over the world, and the remainder of the players, even if it's a two-player game, one player is the overlord and the other player, or players, controls brave heroes trying to save the world, as you might imagine. And like I said, there's two ways you can play. You can either play any of the 20 quests that come in this quest guide as a little standalone adventure. You know, probably on average they're about an hour, a half an hour to an hour for the most part. You know, maybe a little bit longer, you know, depending on how many players you have. So you've got 20 different adventures, you can just play them, have a good time, play them in any order. They're all little standalone mini quests you can do. Alternatively, although actually to be fair, Actually, each one of those quests has two parts. So probably each quest is about an hour and a half to two hours, really. So there's a ton, there's like 40 hours worth of game in this. And you can just play those any way you want. And you know, every time you play one, you just grab a group of characters, you give them their starting equipment. Uh, the, uh, the, the Overlord sets up the board, does some customization, and the game starts. But what's much more interesting about Descent is you can play this game as a epic fantasy campaign. And that's what this is for. The game actually comes with a whole, with a pad full of these pages, and this represents the Shadowrun campaign, where you actually play these adventures in a particular order, with a particular structure. And as you go from one adventure to the next, your characters level up, and the Overlord levels up. And the things that could happen in early adventures can affect what happens in later adventures and stuff like that. So, what I want to do is, I don't want to show you just how a single standalone quest works, I want to show you how the whole campaign works too. But that means I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time talking about the campaign. Now, if you don't care about the campaign stuff and you just want to hear, you just want to get to the hacking and the slashing, there's a button on screen right now that'll let you go to part two where I will actually start the adventure that I've got set up here, the adventure called Castle Darien, which Castle Darien is under attack. So if you want that, you can just hit the buttons on screen. Alternatively, don't hit the button, stay with me, and I will now walk you through all the setup and how the campaign works. In five, four, three, two, one. Okay, you still here? Good, we lost all those bozos. Now let's actually talk about the cool part of this game, the campaign. So, what happens is when you first start playing this game, uh, what comes, you know, like I said, these are the 20 quests or adventures, or whatever you want to call them, that are available in the base game. And there's already expansions that add more quests and more campaigns and all that. The first quest is the intro. It's called First Blood. Now, actually, I would almost go so far as to say there's really only 19 quests in this game because First Blood's a really, it's a super simple tutorial. It's not particularly cool or exciting. And it doesn't, it's the only quest in the game that doesn't really have any kind of impact on the rest of the stuff. But it is still the first quest you do. And now, in this run through today, I'm going to pretend that we have already finished First Blood and the heroes won. So you can see I marked that. If it had been Villard, I would have marked this. The Overlord would have won. So the heroes won. And at the end of that adventure, which was an adventure where, well, okay, when that adventure happened, the first thing we did is the, uh, the Overlord just took their base deck of cards. They set up the board. And, you know, it was, everything was preset. And the heroes, each player, or in a two-player two game, the one hero player chose, uh, you know, in, in this two-player game, I'm going to have to control two heroes. But normally, each hero player controls one hero, obviously. So, I chose Grisbin the Thirsty and Tomble Burrowell, a, a halfling and a dwarf. And now the interesting thing is, I could have chosen, because of this symbol, that this dwarf could have either been a berserker or a knight. And I just went kind of with typecasting and made him a berserker. And that means he actually started with a chipped great axe and rage as a special ability he's got. And I also went typecasting for the halfling and made him a thief, which meant he started out with the greedy ability, throwing knives, and a lucky charm. But now I could have gone against type. I could have made Grisbin here a noble knight. 
And that would have given him access to a completely different set of abilities and a completely different deck of cards that meant a different upgrade path. So he could play very, very differently if he was a knight. And the same for this little thief halfling. He could have been a wildlander, which is kind of like a ranger. You know, it means he has a bow and he has lots of special bow abilities and stuff like that. But like I said, I just went with kind of standards. If here's the two anti-heroes, the thief and the crazy man. They were just walking down the road, ended up helping some poor travelers who were being waylaid by a, uh, you know, a, a, an Etten, a, you know, a two-headed giant. This was our very first adventure. We had to take this guy out. And after we saved him, we found out that the kingdom is in trouble. And so we went to the capital and we became unlikely heroes who have to save this land from the overlord. Now, once that was over, when that adventure was over, and it was a pretty quick adventure, everybody, it didn't matter whether the overlord won or the heroes won, everybody earned one experience point, and the heroes, any items they had found during the adventure, they could sell them, whether they used them or not, and then to get some money so they could buy more stuff. And what happened is, Grisbin took his one experience point he had, and he bought Brute Strength, which you can see costs one experience point. So now, he's leveled up. Starting our second adventure, he has four more health. So instead of starting with 14 hit points, he starts with 18. He is truly a Raging Brute Berserker. But the thief, he didn't particularly like any of the level, you know, the low level upgrades he could get, so he decided to save his experience point, and he's going to wait till he has a little bit more so he can buy a higher level ability. And that is marked here in our hero and XP log, where this is his symbol. You can see I'm using this symbol for him there, and so he start he has one experience point that he's saving till later. Now the Overlord also levels up throughout the adventure. The Overlord always has this deck of 15 cards, and over time as he levels up or in this case she, because it's going to be Jen, she levels up, she can add more and more cards, and she can take other cards out, so it's like a really slow deck builder. You can customize the deck to your liking. And the Overlord, you can see, spent an experience point, did, and so the Overlord did buy a new ability. And now it's interesting, there's a whole bunch of abilities the Overlord can buy, and they're divided into three different categories. Warlord, and, oh, I forget what they're called, Deceptor, or, I forget what they all are, but it's kind of like a tech tree. As you start leveling up in one particular, you can just like branch out and get a lot of different types, or you can really focus on one and level up through a tech tree. But anyway, so the Overlord has no leftover experience because they bought it, the Halfling does, and also they traded in the item they got for 25 bucks, it wasn't really worth that much, and so they couldn't buy anything at the store, and so they're saving their money. Hopefully at the end of this quest, once they've saved Castle Darien, they'll have enough money to buy some stuff, and we'll draw random cards and we'll see what they can buy at the store. Anyway. So, we've finished the first story, we've done our mid-adventure stuff where we buy things, we level up, etc, etc, and now, because the heroes won first blood, the heroes get to choose whether, you know, we're in Act 1, so they could go to a Fat Goblin, Castle Darien, the Cardinal's Plight, the Masquerade Ball, or Death on a Wing. Those are all the Act 1s. It's their choice, and the entire quest book is available, for, there are no secrets in here. The whole thing is available for everybody to look at. So. If they wanted to game it, the hero player could really try to look through these and figure out, okay, which of these quests are, is going to be best suited to us considering that we are a berserker and a thief. You know, so you could try and min-max a little bit, or you could just choose one based on what sounds cool. And I just kind of arbitrarily chose Castle Darien, because I figured, what the heck, why not? But, you know, there is a little bit more thinking. Now, what will happen is, if we win Castle Darien, we will, you know, get to mark that we've won it. We'll do more of that leveling up and buying stuff and all that, and then whoever whoever wins gets to choose the next one. So after Castle Darien, if we've leveled up in a certain way, maybe I'll choose the Masquerade Ball, because I'll have gotten a lot more sneaky stuff, which is helpful in the Masquerade Ball, or stuff like that. Um, on, the, on the flip side, if the, if the Overlord wins, they'll choose the next one. Once three of these act, uh, there's five act one quests. Once three of them have been completed, doesn't matter who won, we will then go on to an interlude where we will either go through the Shadow Vault or the Overlord Revealed, and that depends on who won more Act 1 quests. If the heroes won more, it'll be the Shadow Vault. If the Overlord won more, it'll be the Overlord Revealed. After that interlude is over, we then move on to Act 2. We can see there's all these Act 1 quests, and then there's Act 2 quests. And what's interesting is, again, coming back to Castle Darien, if the heroes win this, when we come back in Act 2, the Dawn Blade will be the quest we do. If the Overlord won it, it'll be the desecrated tomb. So, the, what happened in the first act directly affects what adventures you'll have in the second act. And of course, you know, the quests are kind of, like, arguably they're, I don't know if they're all evenly balanced or not, or if, you know, maybe because the heroes won the first time now, the, the, the one you have to play is maybe better for the villain. I don't really know how it's balanced. I don't, I'm not that much of an expert of the game. But the main thing is, after there's a ton of variety. You could play through this Shadowrun campaign 
tons of times and get a completely different adventure every time depending on who wins and who loses. Plus, of course, you'll bring different characters or, you know, the same characters but with different archetypes. You can level them up to focus on different aspects of their character. There's just a ton because ultimately, when you get to the finale, Again, the you know if it's the heroes who won more often, it's Gorn Reveal or Gryvorn Revealed, or it's the man who would be king if the Overlord won more often. And the setup of these finales changes based on what happened in these earlier quests. So you know the the whole campaign does take on kind of like a personalized atmosphere, which is very very cool. It's really, as far as I'm concerned, the absolute neatest thing about this game. Although it is kind of a bummer. Well, actually, I'll talk about you know that when I get to final thoughts. Anyway, though, so that's the big picture. We finished First Blood, leveled up a little bit, then we chose Castle Darien, and so now we're gonna have to go and do that. But before we go to Castle Darien, or I should say, before we start this adventure, this quest here that I've already set up ahead of time, before we do that, we have to travel to Castle Darien, and that's where this map of the land comes in. The uh, you know the the Shadow Room campaign map. Now, Aaron is the capital of the land, and this is where we are. And in fact, I mean, if you want, you can even use our little characters to indicate this. Now, we've already leveled up, we've bought our stuff, and we've chosen that our next quest is going to be Castle Darien. It could have been the Fat Goblin over here, or the Cardinal's Plight way over here. Interesting, the Cardinal's Plight would have had us go through one, two, three, four. But Castle Darien only had us go through one, two. Because what's going to happen is, now that we're ready to go, we have to travel to our next quest. So let's travel, and boom. We hit the road, which means we now come over here to the travel cards. The overlord draws a card, and we see what, what befalls us on the way to Castle Darien. And now it's possible, Now, actually there is something that happens on the road, but you know, on, some of the, on each of these cards, two icons do nothing, so nothing might have happened. But in fact, what did happen? You come across traveling merchants. Each hero tests their knowledge and draws one search card if he passes. Okay, cool. So, this is a happy... Fortunate accident. Although, unfortunately, we have to touch our knowledge. These guys are both dum-dums. A knowledge of two and a knowledge of two. You know, his strength is five. His awareness is five. But unfortunately, this is a knowledge test. So what happens is, whenever you do an attribute check, which is strength, knowledge, willpower, and awareness, I think. You know, fist, book, uh, spirits. I don't know what you want to call that. And eyeball. Anyway, so we're going to test the knowledge thing. And... Because uh, each of us has a two. Let's do the dwarf first. As long as he is two or less, he will succeed. And you can see there's blank spaces on here, but there's a lot of big numbers. So come on, let's roll a, let's roll a two, a roll a two. A three plus a one is not a two, it's a four. So he failed to strike a bargain with the merchant. So bad luck. Now you can imagine if one of these guys was a wizard, chances are they'd have a very high knowledge and they'd probably be able to benefit from this. But okay, now we move on to the tomble. He's also an idiot. Let's see how he does. Come on, give me a two blanks, double blanks, double blanks. <gasps> wow, look at that. A blank and a one. So he did it. Tomble did it. So he gets to draw a search card and for free, the heroes are starting out at a slight advantage. He has found a stamina potion, which by the way is worth 25 bucks. At the end of this adventure, we will have 25 bucks, whether we use the stamina potion or not. So that's pretty cool. Also for the adventure, I mean, either one of these guys could be carrying the stamina potion. All right, so that was a very nice uh, visit with the merchant. Now let's continue on. Doo, 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 doo. Boom, okay, here we go. Have to do another one. Let's see what we run across. Alrighty, and there is a, there, you know, again, it was, this would have been plains or forest, but something happens on the road, and it is, the Overlord's spies are everywhere. Ah, <laughs> okay, we test our knowledge again, and the Overlord gets an Overlord card for every hero that fails. See, normally, at the beginning of an adventure, the Overlord gets a hand equal to the number of heroes. So there's two heroes, he gets two. But this means the Overlord might get a few more tricks up their sleeve right from the get-go. So let's test our knowledge, and unfortunately, it's our knowledge again. These dummies are probably not going to notice those spies chasing after him. Let's see what happens. A three and a five. Yes, this is the stupidest dwarf ever. Let's see if the thief is a little bit smarter. And it is a three and a five. Okay, so we they were so happy and excited about that stamina potion they got for free that they didn't notice that fail, fail. Two spies saw them coming, and so the Overlord gets to start with four cards instead of two. Okay, and that's it. It's really simple. It's you know, it's it's really not an adventure necessarily. It's it's more kind of like an extended setup for for the uh, for for the adventure we're about to do. And speaking of which, we can now move on 
to the assault on Castle Darien, which is already set up, and this is where I think everybody else is going to want to come in. So, why don't you go on and hit the button that's on screen right now, or you can go to Final Thoughts, so I don't think you necessarily want to do that. Your call, though, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.